Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Well, probably never. What I do know, this is still 4F Beauty. I did not film this look, but it's a variation on a theme of a previous film that I have up where I used the Pantone colours for the year. I used exactly the same palettes as I used in that film, just different shades, different placements. If you really want me to film this look, I will do, let me know. But this, this is my wish list. We've all got one. And Katie Marie started a tag, or at least that's where I saw it anyway. I, I think it's I think it was Katie Marie that started the tag and it appealed to me. And I need a film. And I'm in a lot of pain. And there's noise happening everywhere. So I figured a quick eleven question tag film is probably tempting the uh, sound gods a bit less than trying to film a whole makeup tutorial. So, to reassure you all that this is still me and I will still be blethering on, some of the sloth straws here. So you know what time it is? Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Because here it comes. And this is normally the point that you now see me completely devoid of makeup, hair scraped up, and to be honest, looking a bit rougher than the inside of Methuselah's flip flop. However, today. You get the covered in pigment me. So, I've still got an itchy nose because although I love my Slayable Days and I love this one, this Orange Dream School, I love the smell of it, but it does make my nose itch. I don't know why, but I'm nearly out of it. Of course, I've got another one in that box up there. But I've got, um, I've got, an, I've got a rose bottle here that I haven't started yet. I've got like, three or four bottles in the drawer. Before I have to restart on those ones, will be okay. Right, wish list. Told you I'd be blethering on still, didn't I? Um, I'm probably just going to put pictures up here because obviously, wish list, I don't have them. Um, the oldest product on my wish list, or the thing that I've wanted for longest Sigma brushes particularly their kabuki airbrushes for the foundation um, and some of their, their blending brushes the big fluffy blending brushes they always look so nice I mean don't get me wrong I've got some lovely brushes and I'm sure these aren't any better than any other myriad of brushes that I've got but everyone raves about them so much I just want to try them and see if they really are that good Question two. The newest product on your wish list. Mm. This is also um, one of the brands that I want to try this year. The Sydney Grace X Mel Thompson Tiny Marvels palette. That's just stunning. And it's, although there's a fair amount of neutrals in there, they're not boring neutrals. It, you know, it doesn't look like a half neutral, half colourful palette. It looks like a colourful palette, even though there are a handful of more neutral shades in there. And I just, I really, really want that palette. Number three, a wish list item you keep forgetting about. 
the Suva Beauty Hyper Colour palette. That came out and I was like, oh, oh, I like that. Oh, oh, I really want that. But there were other things at the time that was taking my money and other palettes that were limited edition. And I thought, well, okay, well, that, that can wait, that can wait. And I, I keep forgetting about it. And then I'll see a picture of it because someone will be using it in a tutorial or they'll be doing a palette declutter and discuss it. And I'm like, oh, I still haven't tried that yet. I really must keep an eye out for that. I must look in the January sales or I must look in the... Do you think I remember? Nah. Minute the sale's over, guess what pops into my head? You were meant to be looking for that palette. Fibro. It's a gift. It just keeps giving. It could be more selfish. It could keep itself to itself more. But it chooses not to. Question four. A product you're glad you've removed from your wish list. Um... The Jeffree Star Extreme Frosts. Because much as how I love me, a good bedazzling highlight. And really wanted to try those because they look so reflective and so pretty. Even when I was buying his makeup, there was no way in hell I was going to pay $50, which... You could only get them from his website, which meant I would have had to pay shipping on top of that. And I'd have had to pay import tax on arrival. And because I was having to pay it on arrival, I'd also have to pay a handling fee. So that one highlight would have worked out closer to 100 quid for me. I couldn't justify that at all. Um, and now, of course, he's on my persona non grata list I don't talk about his products on here um, I have still got the palettes but I've depotted all of them um, repressed a lot of the shades when they broke when I was depotting them and I'll you know I'll use them off camera or you know refer to it as a green shade from a company that I no longer support or no longer exists or whatever um, but another product that I'm glad I've taken off of my list simply because of how much it costs is the Natasha Denona Gold palette um, I fell in love with that palette the minute I saw it which is weird for me because it is a neutral palette um, I have got the W7 dupe of it, which I love. I use that a lot off camera. Um, but I tried the Natasha Denona Love palette. Because I've got a couple of her little, about the size of a USB stick palette. The really mini ones that she does. I've got the mini gold in that. And I've got the Tropic, mini Tropic which is the colourful row from the bottom of the Tropic palette, which is the only row I was interested in. And I wasn't that impressed with them, I'm like, yeah, they're okay, but you know, I've, I've got drugstore ones that are that good. And people were like, oh, no, 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 the little palettes are not the same as the big palettes. So I got one of the 65 quid palettes, not that I paid 65 quid for it, because I got it on Depop. Um, and now having tried her full-size formula, I can still say it's okay, but it's still not the price that she wants for it. If I see one on Depop for a price I'm happy to pay and it's not in too bad a condition I might pick it up but it's not on my wish list anymore which I'm quite pleased about. Number five, a wish list item you cannot get i.e. in your country. Um, Luxy Cosmetics, Davina Cosmetics, both of them do ship to the UK, but they only insure it as far as the American border. So if it gets lost or damaged on the plane ride across the Atlantic, being picked up by baggage handlers, and very carefully thrown onto the conveyor belts 
and then picked up by probably someone like Yodel or Hermes who I swear sometimes they use their, their boxes as, as football practice. The chances of them arriving without any damage is... Uh, let's just say there's more chance of me fitting into a size 8 frog this side of next Michaelmas. <clears throat> so the fact that Davina and Luxie say if anything happens beyond the American border there's nothing we can do. If it goes missing, tough. If it arrives broken, tough. I don't like that attitude. I know they are indie companies. But indie companies over here ship to America and cover it all the way to America. So it, it, it's it's the it, mm. I think it's the arrogance that you'll still buy from us because we're the best that really annoys me. But you know you can't get them over here, and of course. Um, Nomad Cosmetics are a bit of a bitch to get, but my lovely, my lovely 4F family member Shari sent me my favourite Nomad palette, which is the Tokyo palette, and I absolutely love her for it, because I never thought I was actually going to get my hands on that palette, ever, and I got it, and I tell you, I have played with it so much off camera you would not believe. If I, I, honestly, I could have filled probably four months worth of films just with different looks that I've done with the Nomad palette. Um, product six. Product six. Question six. Losing the plot here. A product on your wish list. Your wish, wish list. Wish list. Hmm. Clearly, I need more coffee. A product on your wish list you'll probably never buy. Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2. Love the look of that palette. Adore the look of that palette. Keep looking for it on Depop. Cheapest I've seen it is 80 quid. I'm not paying 80 quid for a palette. Uh -uh. If I'm paying 80 quid for a palette, Pat McGrath is standing in my kitchen are doing my makeup for me. Mm. But yes, Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2. Oh, I love it, but I know I'm. It's never going to be. Because of its, its high price, to pick up a second hand one in any decent condition, it's never going to be at a price that I'm prepared to pay or that I can afford to pay. Because, you know, I'm disabled, I only get my disability money coming in. I have to be careful how I use it. So, and I would never be cheeky enough to ask for a palette that expenses from hobby. Or anybody else for that matter. Number seven, wish list product you'll probably buy next. I have been taken by the MAC Viva Glam Lippies. Um, I quite like the look of those. I might pick one of those up. Uh, they tend to do a red one and a nude one each year. Um, and I actually like both the colours of last year's one. So um, I may pick one or both of those up at some point. Question 8. Told you I'm zooming through these today. A wish list item you added from watching YouTube. Tarty Textured Neutrals Volume 1. Which I have actually since purchased. But I, I wrote these questions out and wrote the answers out before I bought the Tarty palette, so... Mm. Um, but I suppose you could you could put the Sydney Grace Mel Thompson Tiny Marvels palette in there as well because that's another one that 
Um, oh, and oh, 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 and the Betty Jean um, Shroud Cosmetics freaking Bats palette. I want that. I really want that one. But Shroud have closed their website for the minute while I catch up with orders. So I really hope that comes up for a pre order again because I missed it last time. I didn't have the money. You watch it, I'll open it up for pre-order and I won't have the cash there again. It's always the way. Um, question 8.2. An item you removed from your wish list from watching YouTube. The Coloured Rain Juicy Boost Palette. Now I've got two Coloured Rain palettes. I've got the Queen of Hearts and I've got Safari Rain. And I rate both of them so, so highly. I had Safari Rain first, Hubby got me that, and the quality of that palette is just astounding. It's, it's, it really is good. And I did a, a film not so long ago um, with Jonathan Pierre where we did a palette bingo with Queen of Hearts because I want to try and use my older palettes. Um, and given how old that palette is now, the fact that it was still outperforming some of the newer palettes that I've bought, I was amazed. So of course I saw this Juicy Boost palette and you had two options. You could buy it either as one long palette or you could buy it where it was like double where they sort of cut it in half and did like two nine pans or one eighteen pan so you could decide which was best for you in terms of storage um, I, I saw that and I'm like oh, oh coloured rain quality with those colours? oh yes please um, and then I saw some reviews on it and I'm like oh, am I having real problems with that? It does not look like normal coloured rain quality. So I sat back and I watched a few more. And a few more. And a few more. And then I went to my wish list. And I crossed it off. Which is a real shame. Because if they had managed to do the same quality as their Safari Rain and their Queen of Hearts palette in the Juicy Boost palette... No, that would have been a palette. Nine, the most affordable item on your wish list. Um, it's actually a makeup revolution product. Um, they they got this Crystal Lux face palette out. Now, I don't normally go for face palettes that have got a bronze, a blush, and a highlight because. Nine times out of ten, I only end up liking two of the ones that are in there, and one of them gets, you know. But I quite like the look, the light shade that they've got, because they've got it in a light, a medium, a dark. They've got a deep dark, or is it just... The... I know they've got it in different shades for different skin tones. Well done, Revolution. Wish other companies would do the same thing. Um, but they're kind of... They're, they're like my... Ooh, that was nearly my MAC one on the floor. Um, they're like the cover effects blush, where you've got a matte and a shimmer version. But what they've done, they've kind of well, the pictures up there. They've they've sort of like diagonally through the the pan and got matte one side and shimmer the other on both the highlight the blush and the bronzer. And I like that idea because then you can. You can use the, the matte highlight and the matte blush from bronzer for work. And then if you're going out, you can chuck the shiny ones on. You know. So I really want to try that because I'm, I'm curious to see what the quality is like. Um, so far, I don't... I've been looking for some reviews on it, but I haven't found any yet. So if you've seen anybody that's reviewed that, if you can just let me know in the uh, comments box. I'd really appreciate that, thank you. And number 10, the most expensive item on your wish list. Oh, going back to what I was saying about I'm not spending that much on a bloody palette. Uh, 
the Natasha Denona, the blue, purple and green star palette that she did. The one that's like $220 or something. Oh, I love that colour scheme. But there ain't no way in hell I'm paying that amount of money for it. Mm-mm, not happening. And the final final question wish list item you can't get anymore the dragon child palette by menagerie formerly makeup monsters i am absolutely gutted that i can't get hold of that palette anymore I know she's selling the singles and everything, but the whole, the artwork of the palette, plus we all know buying singles is more expensive than buying them assembled into a palette. <laughs> Girls are having fun next door. Um, so yeah, I, if anybody's got a Dragon Child palette they don't want anymore, hello, <laughs> love you forever. <laughs> I jest. Well, I'm not jesting. I do want it, but I don't expect you to send me your palette. Um, so there we go. That is the wish list tag started by Katie Marie. Um, basically, if you have got a YouTube channel and we have collabed together, I challenge you to answer this wish list. There we go, it's nice and easy. And there's no pressure on you specifically, but likewise there's pressure on you specifically if you collab with me. <laughs> oh, okay that rabbit face thing is not attractive. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, if you don't have a YouTube channel Feel free to copy and paste the questions into a comment and just write your answers alongside it for me in the comments because I would be really interested to find out what you've got on your wish list and what you are gutted that you missed out on. I need I need to share the, the pain. Of, oh, I could never get a hold of that one anymore. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I really need to go and get a coffee because I am starting to lose the plot. How would you tell the difference? I'm really not quite sure, to be honest. Asking a question is the first sign of madness. Getting an answer is the second one. Right. If you're one of my 4F beauties, please check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you, but they are leaving my films in your feed so it's not obvious you've been deleted. Uh, they are also changing notification status from all back to personalised. Not that they seem to be sending emails at the moment, well to me anyway. Um, perhaps they just don't like me anymore. Realisation hits like a swinging fist. Anywho, uh, as well as checking your subscription to me, you got a spare few minutes, it's worth checking your subscriptions to other channels as well because it's happening a lot. YouTube are not being kind to small creators right now. Once you've done that, as I said, I would love to find out your answers to this wish list. Uh, and like I said, let me know if you want me to to do this particular look as a tutorial. I know, I know, I've had a lot of requests for the sort of grungy, gothic-y, black and green look that I did for my I've Had Enough video. I am going to film that for you I promise uh, but I've just got a lot of other palettes and things that I need to 
film with first but I promise you I will get around to that if you also want to see this one um, as a tutorial if you think it's different enough from the one that I did earlier then let me know and I will absolutely add this one to the list um, if this is your first time here and you've tripped over me somehow hi hello welcome hope you enjoyed it here um, this is a, a reasonably good example of the kind of nonsense you get from me on this channel usually it involves me giving a very detailed description on how to throw coloured pigments onto your face uh, in a very close up, up close and personal, just my eyes on screen like a big brother is watching you <laughs> uh, see what I mean, I need more coffee <clears throat> but I do waffle at you uh, about everything and nothing in particular in what I'm told is quite a soothing and relaxing voice so, if that sounds like your kind of thing, it would be lovely if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are, after all, the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually send them. In the meantime, as well as the rather ample back side upon which I am sitting, I have a rather ample back catalogue of films that you could watch. I've got tutorials, I've got collabs, I've got other tag films like this, um, challenges, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them, so hopefully there'll be something that you'll find interesting. and. As I have said for what feels like the dawn of time, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, get comfy and just relax, chill out and enjoy spending a little bit of me time listening to me blether on, usually while applying coloured pigments to my face. Right. My lovelies, shorter one this time, makes change for me, I know. But as ever, all that remains for me to say is you all stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.